pleasure to see you. After all this time. But those remains do not belong to you. Lord Moog will have his dignity. Oh, this guy should come in handy. Don't die, Ronnie. Ooh. Ooh, phase two. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Vamos, vamos, vamos. We we get we got something cooking. We got something cooking, people. Algo está colando. Está colando. And notice how Mikola changed Radon's insignia. Doesn't have the, the that gravity uh, magnetic symbolism that it had before. If you're familiar with that with Star, the Scar, Star Scourge sword set, then you would understand the office. And as you can see... Lord Brother. Look at all them horn set corpses piled up. Algo está colando, and I'm loving it. Oh my God, Miguela, Mikela, Radan. And notice not only the, the omen horns the and the chains, order. which is symbology the of the omens the being locked up in the sewers, but also how you have what looks like Mug inside the Greaves, and which is very different from his original Greaves. Este cabrón sí me tiene cagao. Do I, Mikola? And my Mikola can eat my ass. Redone. No diddy. Run. Oh, pues me lo traje. Ooh, I'm dead. We got him halfway though. So I'm not too upset. I'm just not used to wielding a shield. Not only that, I'm used to having L1 to heal and everything and triangle as you know my my shield wall. Sorry, Ansbach, I'm leaving you behind on this last one. me this time.
Okay, now we're talking. Gotta really time it up. Sub zero win. Oh man, I'm on my final attempt. If I don't make it today, that's okay. I got all of tomorrow. I got a whole weekend to look forward to fighting Radon again. So far, he's been cooking. It's cooking. It is cooking. Estamos cocinando, and I don't know, man. We made some pretty fun progress here. But hey, screw it. Let's do it. I promise you, a thousand years. That's on me. That was a hundred percent on me, bro. God. Oh my God. Let's go. Oh my God. Oh my God. Cooking for my kid before going to work is. I'm from Brooklyn, New York, Williamsburg, born and raised, but for the last 11 years, been from Tampa, Florida. I am, of course, New Yorican, and because I've been here for 11 years, that means Tampa Rican, so ya sabe. But forget that. I'm not only your Elden Lord, I'm your Elden God, bitch. My mimic master. Damn, Fiolier. Nice back. Oh, nice. You you also get his actual. I'll be honest with you guys. I was not expecting to win this. Oh my God. I know there's two things here. Let us go together. That's the uh, thing for... So, where is... Victory. Praise the Elden Ring. I did it. Damn straight. Usually if you made it all the way to the end, that means you survived this bitch. Yeah, look at everyone that's died here. Myself included. It was weird 
how to trigger the cutscene. Supposed to be a cutscene that happens here. You know what? This is sad. St. Trina's Blossom. Yeah, as you can see, St. Trina has fallen. So, just like how Mikola is gone. Damn. It's just so sad, you know? For those of you tuning in, obviously St. Trina was Mikaela's other self. We did what she wanted us to do, with or without Theolier. Just to clear it out, level 411, figure 60, mind 45, endurance and strength. Endurance 60, strength and dex 80, intelligence 40, faith 45, 80 arcane. The only weapons I used, Blasphemous Blade and Mulgren's Sacred Spear. Both maxed out. One just to, for healing, not to necessarily attack. The Sacred Spear. Yo, it let the bleed in. I originally had this for defense. I ended up not needing it, so there goes that. I would have moved a lot faster without it. Staff of the Great Beyond, so I can use my incantations and spells. Especially that impenetrable thorns. Golden Vow. And of course, you know, Flame Grant Me Strength. Got EG's Mirror Helm. Because it has, out of all the helmets, has the highest damage negation for Holy. Same thing with the Crucible Tree Armor. In, in case you're wondering which one is this, this is Siluria, the One of the, the female Crucible Knights. Goskin Apostle Braces. They have the highest um, holy damage negation. Tree Sentinel Greaves. Highest holy damage negation. Bear in mind, I don't have the fingerprint shield. But hey, by a skin of my teeth, folks. Lord of Blood Exaltation. Makes the bleed hurt more. Pearl Drake Talisman plus three. Again, boosting all non-physical damage negation. Golden Braid. This guy really boosts your holy damage negation. And this guy, because Radon hits like a, a 500 trucks boost physical damage negation for your mimic tier i use the hefty rock pot so every time he hit it and it's like that uh that TikTok gif that i have of roman reigns and and paul Heyman. Where i'm like no the tribal chief won't do it but the wise man will the wise man being my mimic tier blessing america so that way if his hp was running low and mimic decided to be crazy he can actually heal himself instantly and whereas for me it's limited for my Mimic tier, it's unlimited. Same thing with the Raw Meat Dumpling. Yes, Raw Meat Dumpling restores half your HP, does poison you, but the Mimic tier, kind of, it's kind of a moot point. This is, of course, what prevented me from being enchanted by Miguela. And then I was going to use this for reasons, but it ended up not being necessary. <clears throat> so my poison is only 66. Um, and I never ended up using Millennia's Room, which would have been great for a Psycho Crusher build. But hey, I'll probably use it for New Game Plus 3 when we revisit some of these boss fights. Man, there's that. I can't believe we did it, though. We did it, folks. You know, you know how freaking... It's just wild. The weird thing is, the cutscene didn't trigger. It's supposed to trigger, was it not? There's something up ahead now. Aha! What's this? It's a memory.
Even if it means manipulating everyone's free will, should you consider that? <clears throat> so does that make him any better than Ronnie? Well, there's only two steps left to all this, folks. If you notice here, the veil never broke. What's well, one thing we can do that we have left, aside from going to the round table? Let's go see the Grand Am, the Imperium Grand Am. Because she's probably still alive, and we can just walk right to her. We just got to get through those stupid little goons, and that's it. Again, they don't mean shit, but she does. So let's see what she has to say now. Heaven's great and gallant sculptor keeper. I know it in my bones. Thy deed is done. A worthy deed, no doubt. To bring our foes what surely was deserved recompense. Oh, oh. Heaven hath borne witness to our plight. Thy gleaming wrath and unparalleled dance. Though a trifle it might seem to thee, I have prepared a dish in celebration. It would please me Ooh, much if she made us some food. Partake, partake, partake until thou art. Perfect ending. We beat Radon. And we get a gourmet scorpion stew. Oh, sculpted keeper, I offer my thanks. Thou danced with passing wrath and beauty, such that rightfully avenged we would be. I have never known such joy as this. Grave resentment fettered thee. Mm -mm. With such bounteous fury didst thou dance, I cannot presume thou didst not suffer. Please, I ask thee, allow thyself some rest. None of the tower would dare interfere, and if one should, I'll see to them myself. <laughs> wow. That's one hell of an art conclusion. Apologies, O oh noble visitor. But wouldst thou permit me a little rest? Mine eyes are oft apt to glaze over. The years taking their toll, tis plain to see. Even telling dream from reality is a task increasingly beyond me. Okay. Apologies, but what's Yep, and that's it. And after that, she passes, if I'm not mistaken. And as you can see, she has now passed. One more gourmet scorpion stew. Yep, that's it. She can finally rest after everything her people went through. Although, like I said before, I'm not sure she herself was at fault. She likely, you know, at the end of the day, she wanted vengeance for the massacre of her people. 
she may have not had anything to do with the person that actually you know genocided all of America's people but still you know there, there is some sense of you know and as you can see these fingers no longer talking you know why they probably got a hint that the greater will has cut themselves off from Metter. And Metter has been cut off from everyone. So when it comes to our fate as Elden Lords, it's what we choose. Now, since we got the dough now. Young Lion's Helm. I already have the Red Main Helm. I'm going to show you the difference between the two as well. I, I feel like it's only right for you guys. I also want to show you how there is a true difference between each, right? So we have Radon's Remain Helm from when we beat him in Caelid. And also, I want you guys to also notice every detail here. So, Helm of the Golden Line, with flowing red hair, worn by General Radan, inherited the furious, flaming red hair of his father, Radigan, fond of its heroic implications. I was born a Champion's Cup. Now I am the Lord of the Battlefield's Lion. Now here, Young Lion's Helm. Supposed to be him when he was younger, but notice how the slight adjustments. Like if, especially if you look at the top area, the way the lion looks. Um, it's more golden. Whereas this one's kind of more worn out. Golden Helm worn by Radon in his younger years. Proudly displaying his heroic red hair is fitting attire for a lion. When Mel Millennia, Blade of Mikela. Let the rot flower blossom in Aeonia. Radan heard a murmur in his ear. Mikela awaits thee, O promised consort. Question is now, was Millennia bewitched along with Radan by Mikela? Because remember, Mikela, you try to challenge him, he tries to enchant you. Right? That's what happened to Ansbach. Ansbach was trying to free Mog of Mikla's enchantment. Instead, he himself ended up being enchanted. And that's how he got dragged into this mess. He was actually trying to help his, bro his, his lord snap out of the, the, the shenanigans. Now, let's look at this one. Radon's lion armor right here. All right. Said to symbolize Godfrey, first elden lord, and his beast regent, Shera, Serosh. From his youngest years, Radon was naturally captivated by the Lord of the Battlefield. So he always seen himself as, you know, Godfrey's, you know, stepson or wannabe son. Boy, how it did play out, though. Again, if you notice, there is a difference. Like, obviously, you don't have the long sleeve thing. Obviously, it's shorter. But also, you don't have all the extra line mane in the middle now it has the line straight in the middle. Almost like Seros just took, took over the aesthetics. But if you also notice here, if you ever notice right over here on the, on the sleeves, they're short sleeves, and you can see omen horns, which is symbology of the fact that Mog's remains have been absconded with. Again, right here, I almost feel like we had... Because remember, this is original griefs. If you notice... These are more studded on where the knuckles are. And then you have more like a lion, lion mane uh, feathery texture up at the end. But then if you notice the young lion one, that feathery texture is gone. Straight up gold. And then instead of studded, they look spiked now around the knuckles. And if you notice that Crucible Simbaja, I almost feel like this was a sort of foretelling of what was going to happen which is why i have reason to believe that while he was infatuated with being godfrey's unofficial son he was probably bewitched by mikola again just a theory folks and when he got this gear set up it's almost a foreshadowing of the fact that mikola had him bewitched with an agenda
and that the agenda written within his own greaves, his own gauntlets, which makes you wonder, you know. And again here, you can see it. It's, you know, you, you can't even look past it at that point. And the, now again, Young Lion Greaves here, the lion's head sticks out more. And there's more gold. So, you know, a little aesthetic differences. But then some of them really point out how much of Maul got absorbed in this. Now, here we go. Remembrance of a god and a lord. Remembrance of Radan, consort of Mikula, hewn into the shadow tree. In their childhood, Mikula saw in Radan a lord, his strength and his kindness that stood in stark contrast with their afflicted selves. And so Mikula made his heartfelt wish that Radan would one day be his king consort. Now, there's three things here. I'll read all of them because I want to gratify you guys with this. Light of Mikula. The strength of Mikula upon his deific return, wielded as an incantation, annihilates foes with a pillar of light. Mikula sought to accept all that was and would be, but found one that refused to be embraced. This guy and everyone else has beaten Radon. No wonder, as one god and one king consort is all the world needs. So, uh... You know, now here's the one thing. Obviously, there's ways to avoid this, similar to the ancient dragon lightning strike, where when it hits, oh, it hits hard. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of room to miss. Requires 72 faith. Now, let's look at these two the light one. All right. Great swords of black steel wielded by Radon in his youth. These are the younger ones. This is before, I guess. He embraced the full gravity magic. These were in his possession immediately before his triumph over the stars. Before his triumph. So it was before he froze the stars. The swords of a lord who does not rely on physical strength and gravity alone. Light speed slash. Assume a luminous form and leap forward to deliver a downward slash at the speed of light. This attack will be followed up by an additional light attack. Charge to increase the power of the skill and number of follow up attacks. Um, as per only waifu on YouTube, um, the charge-up of the attack doesn't really improve much. It looks really nice. It is really cool. But the one we really want is this one. With Promise Consort. Imbue the two great swords with the light of Mikula and then deliver a slashing attack accompanied by columns of light. This is the one that can really mess people up. Again, same item description. As for stats, stat requirements... You know, there you go. So with that in, that in mind, I'm going with these guys. All right. And I will go ahead and indulge you for one last time. The remembrances of all the remembrance bosses of Elden Ring, except for the Regal Ancestral Spirit, which I just don't give a rat's ass about that one. We got Estelle. Natural born of the void, a malformed star born in the lightless void far away. Once destroyed an eternal city and took away their sky. A falling star of ill omen. And I do wonder if Meta Mother of Fingers, right? Meta Mother of Fingers probably sent Estelle. You know, but then again, we see this, we see Estelle pop up like towards like. After beating Radon, so it makes you wonder if this is a consequence. But anyway, obviously, Fortisax. After Godwin the Golden became the Prince of Death, the ancient dragon fought long and hard against the death within its companion. A last victory is never achieved, and its only reward was corruption. In other words, death blight infecting him. Um, makes you wonder if. Um, you know how they say Godwin, golden child of America. Oh, nothing could go wrong. Bullshit. I think he was cursed with death blight. Hence why never see his feet, never see his legs. Fire giant. 
Survivor of the war against the Giants upon realizing the flames of their forge would never die. Queen Marika. Marika. Mark them with a curse. O oh, trifling giant, may's thou tend thy flame for eternity. Godric. Feeble man saw power through a grotesque act of grafting. One day we'll return together to a home bathed in rays of gold. In her youth, Rolana, I mean Renala, Renala, woo, let's get that right, was a prominent champion who charmed the academy with her lunar magic, becoming its master. She also led the Glenstone Knights and established the House of Caria as royalty. Rikard took the form of a giant serpent that he might devour, grow, and live eternally. I understand. The rule of blasphemy is long and perilous. One cannot walk it unprepared to sin. Starship, the Red Line General wielded gravitational powers which he learned in Celia during his younger days. Also, he would never have to abandon his beloved but scrawny steed. This is why a lot of us were kind of pissed off at the fact that, yo, no letter? Though born of the graceless, uh, one of the graceless omen, Morgoth took it upon himself to become the Earth Tree's protector. He loved not in return, for he was never loved, but nevertheless loved it he did. Wishing to raise Mikla to full godhood, now we know he was bewitched, as per Ansbach, Mog wished to become his consort, making taking the role of monarch. Oh, he became his consort, right? In body, but not in soul. But no matter how much of his bloody bedchamber he tried to share, he received no response from the young Imperium. Mikula and Millennia are both children of a single god. As such, they are both Imperians, but suffered afflictions from birth. One was cursed with eternal childhood, the other harbored rot within. I do wonder sometimes if what you call Mikula was the one truly destined to be Imperian, and basically the fate of Millennia ultimately was to end up being her you know, his shadow, but we all know how that played out. Malekith was a shadow-bound beast given to his Empyrean. Marika's sole need of her shadow was a vessel to lock away destined death. Even then, she betrayed him. So, if you ask me, the whole seduction betrayal thing, she seduced Godfrey and betrayed Malekith. And the story stared us in the face. And most likely, Horalu. As, as per the Tasman Lord Bestow, Homeboy was in the Land of Shadow, and that's where America found him. Just saying, that's my thought on that. When Godfrey, first Elden Lord, was robbed of his grace, becoming tarnished, he had grace first. He didn't become tarnished till later. And if, as, if you read the Tasman Lord's Bestow description, it shows him receiving grace. He received grace from the Shadow Tree with no hesitation. Hence why the whole thing. He took with him his kinfolk and left the lands between. After a long march of the tarnish came to an end, Godfrey divested himself of kingship, becoming a simple warrior once more. The dragon lord whose seat lies at the heart of the storm beyond time is said to have been Elden Lord in the age before the Erd Tree. Once his god has, was fled, the Lord continued to await his return. Who's to say that his Lord was actually the one that was decimated in the destruction of the Horn Scent and was the one whom the Golden Threads uh, came out of by Marika in the story trailer? Just putting it out there. Elden. It was the vassal beast of the greater will and living incarnation of the concept of order. And of course, in order to do the thing, well, I had to take the body of Radigan and Marika. And there you go. So now, with that said, there's only one place to go to conclude it all. And that is here. Now, we have a few options. We can go ahead and put an end to it all. We can do it for Godwin. We go with Ronnie. Either way, the way I see it, we're gods now. So we can run this world alone. 
could run this world and have the those who live in death be okay and do it for fear you know what because i'm pretty much done with this ronnie let's go let's go baby age of stars baby I just want to say this now. This was a pleasure to do a New Game Plus 2. We suffered so much more. But it's worth it. I personally enjoyed it. I love this conclusion. The battle is over, I see. Oh, yes it is, baby. We done. We done zo done -zo. I am your consort eternal, but just know I have ascended to godhood. So we are now equals in this. Now instead of us just being her simp, we're actually her equal. Because we slayed her, her, her brother. I do solemnly swear to every living being and every living soul. Now cometh the age of the stars. A thousand year voyage under the wisdom of the moon. Here beginneth the chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond. into fear, doubt, and loneliness as the path stretcheth into darkness. <laughs> I forgot to take the damn helmet off. But this is how she knows. I went through a lot of hell, girl, even beyond your quest. I did more than kill America and Radigan. I got rid of your twink brother, too. And unfortunately, your Giga Chad brother as well. Again. Well then, shall we? That's right. My I consort. Fear consort eternal. That's right, baby. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, how I've concluded the story. World created by Hidetaka Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin. Director Hidetaka Miyazaki. Co-director Yui Tanimura, a.k.a. the guy who directed Dark Souls 2. So think about that one, folks. So, anyone that called this Dark Souls 2 Part 2, well, you can kind of see why. And it's understandable. But now, in this personal conclusion, again, I'm not going to do safe scumming and none of that. I decided not to do any of that. Um, this was a very fresh experience in a way. Yes, everything in main game was been there, done that for the most part. But I felt like going into the land of shadow and then going back into main game to try all the new goodies. It gave a fresher experience to the main game. That's why, unlike a lot of people, I didn't just... Wait till DSC open and then dropped in. In context of when the story takes place, it would have made more sense just for me to go to the DLC and New Game Plus and that's that. But because I wanted to experience what the game in New Game Plus 2 would be like using newer weapons, newer incantations and spells, I was like, you know what? Let's do something different. Let's, let's make this fun, you know what I'm saying? And I'm glad I did that. Especially in the, the way I went around some things. Uh, in turn, I also found myself really seeing the context of the main game story in a whole different light because of Shadow of the Earth Tree. As far as difficulty, but we know how a lot of people like to whine and bitch. Bear this in mind, this is my first From Software game I've ever played in my life. And that was two years ago when I first got this game. 
I wouldn't say I got mega good or even legendary. Although you had to kind of at least get good to really make it through this fight. But what I will say, the difficulty, in my opinion, is 100% fair. Cry me a river, as good old Jungle Boy Jack Perry would say. Or a scapegoat, however you want to call it, from AEW. I'm not too much of an AEW fan, but this is where I'm like, you know what? I'll go ahead and borrow something from Jack Perry. Why the fuck not? Um, the Dancing Lion, great introduction and a great taste of what was to come. And honestly, you didn't have to have all the Shadow Tree blessings to pull it off. You knew what had to be done. The assignment wasn't too difficult, but the intensity was there. The spectacle was there. The music was fire, right? Relana, the first one to really put me through the, through, you know, th through hell. Awesome fight. I would literally put it right neck and neck with Millennia because she took me a few hours and eventually I beat her, but not without a struggle. And that was one of the fights where my mimic was stronger than me in terms of relative uh, blessing levels and stuff. Mesmer. Oh, oh. oh man, beating him felt amazing. It felt gratifying. Anyone that complained about him being hard, I'm like, no, no. He should be hard. He's son of America. And one that got left behind. You really think he's going to give it to you easy? Mm -mm. He should have brought it in exactly the way he did. I'm glad he brought it. I'm just mad at knowing that I could have beat him sooner. And all I did was just level up just one Shadow Tree Blessing. Just to survive and make it through. And the funny part is, there's a nice video. And I'll probably put it in the link down below in the description. That shows a nice guide of what level, what weapon, what blessing and everything. From main game to DLC. And I was like, damn. I beat Mesmer at the bare minimum. Which is kind of wild. Uh, and I was definitely underblessed when it came to fighting Relana, which I found really, really cool. But then, because of how I got through Mesmer, and then I got a whole bunch of Shadow Tree Blessings in the process, and Revered Ashes and everything, met her mother fingers, put some work in. She, she, she really put me through it. The putrescent night, cool, until you realize if you got the Sacred Relic Sword, uh, you can make decent work out of him. We can also still argue that's probably Leonard as a zombie and the zombie corpse body of physical Redon. Maybe forgetting a few. So the, um, Midra, awesome fight. Lord of Frenzy Flame, killer. Love the fight. I enjoyed every second of it. Who else we got? Yeah, that's that matter of mother fingers. That, that was a fun fight. Uh, when you really realize that you can make a bleed and you got the cycle crusher and you got the right things together you can really make decent work out of her as well let me see I'm trying to remember. Ramina fun fight but I think by the time I got to her I was able to rattle her cage which is why it only took me two tries to beat her literally only two tries at Mimic, at Dry Leaf Dane, knew what I had to do, understood the assignment, handled business. Now, that fight with Letta, it can play out very differently based on what you guys pursue in the story. And let me explain. For some people, they end up getting a whole squad on them. They end up getting Hornset, Freya, Letta, Dry Leaf Dane, and more. That is a whole, like, that could have been me. <laughs> but I chose to do Onspock's quest all the way to the T. So as a result, he came through. Theolier, I did his and the St. Trina quest. So he came through. Um, more, when the enchantment broke, I told him to stay sad forever. And as a result, he ended up dying behind the Church of the Crusade 
cuddling with one of the 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 kindred of rot pests and as a result he never made it so right there one down horn set we helped him all the way through but in the wake of having beaten mesmer when we were heading to ramana he lost his mind so there's that freya we never did the proper back and forth between her and ansbach so she ended up lost never really wondering what the whole thing meant so she was down so that's three fingers down people so it was down to dry leaf dane and letter and then when it came to me you got me ansbach Fiolier, and then spirit ashes instead of mimic i decided to devastate the thing with jolan and anna and it was a five on two this guy cons final uh the promise console radar with mikola i expected no less i expected no less aggression I would have been angry if he would have been nerfed by the last patch or if he would have been borderline easy. I think the only way that could have been any easier was if they let us use Torrent in that final fight. Then I would have been like, I mean, it would have made it, would have made it a lot easier. I ain't gonna lie. But you know what? I'm not bitching about it. I thought it was awesome. I thought it was great. I enjoyed every second of it. As hard as Radon was with Mikula. It was warranted. It was needed. Like, I needed something that was going to make me, like, come back for more in terms of, like, determination to really beat somebody. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you love this. Feel free to follow here on Twitch. Feel free to subscribe here on YouTube. Um, again, this is the end of the Elden Ring uh, experience. So, once again, everyone, thank you. Love you all. Peace and love to all. And...